Hey everyone, Tech Steve here, and in the studio we finally got this TV right here. This is the new 2024 QD7 series from TCL. Now they do make a 6 and an 8 series, which I don't have, but those sound like very intriguing televisions. But today we're going to get this out of the box and I'm going to give you my first impressions. Now the original information I received on this television is that in the series it can do up to 2400 lumens of peak brightness but I'm not sure which model does that. And you can get these models that can support up to 1500 local dimming zones. So let's get right into it and see what this TV is all about. So one great thing about this television is that for a lot of people, you can find the right size. We're talking about, it's available in a 55, 65, 75, 85, and a massive 98 inch. First of all, it has QD mini LED technology, but what is that? According to TCL, this is a advanced display technology that combines the brilliance of quantum dots and the precision of mini LEDs to create stunning visuals and lifelike colors. It also has QLED colors, 120 hertz panel, which is great, and it will support up to 144 variable refresh rate, and that's more for people with computers. You also have all types of other features down here, including 240 motion, as well as Dolby Vision IQ, which automatically detects the signal and adjusts the light in your room for you. Down here, we have features like uh, some applications powered by Google TV, and it will work with Alexa, Apple HomeKit, Chromecast built-in, and Apple AirPlay. All right, let's go and get this out of the box so we can take a look at it, because besides CES, this is that was the last time I actually saw this television live in person. All right, so this is the back cover that holds the TV in the center of it. And this is the base for it. I remember they used to make it out of metal, but now you have this plastic with reinforced feet right here. But it has a couple of rubber pieces right here to keep it stable to your table. And it comes with a power cord, some screws for it, and instruction manual. And keep in mind, this power cord is a two-prong, kind of like the same thing you use on your computers. One thing about this remote control, it does have a backlight. You have your navigation as well as some hotkeys at the bottom, your channel up and down, but we'll take a look at some of the features a little bit later on this video or the full review. So now we're gonna assemble the pedestal real quick and all you need to do is just pull off this back cover. If you look on the back of it, there's three little tabs right here, three little tabs right there, and you're just gonna line those up like that. And then you're gonna put three screws in there to hold it in place. And then the next part, we'll go ahead and put it on the TV. One thing I noticed is that there's only one pattern right here, as you can see right there. And there's a little piece right here on the back of the foot. But when we put this in, it allows you to put the four screws in. So you cannot raise or lower this stand like you can on some of the other TCL models. So after I got the TV out of the box, there was always styrofoam on the floor. So if you just wonder what type of vacuum I use here in the studio, I use the Dyson V15. This is one of the best vacuums I've ever owned. It's not sponsored video or anything like that. Just let you know what happens in between the scenes. Here's a look at the back of the TV. And one thing that stands out is it has a Onkyo sound system with ultra bass. And we'll test that in the main review, but it looks pretty promising as far as audio. So you can mount this on the wall. As you can see, there's some starter screws in here that you can use to find the right bolt pattern. And there's the other holes right there. And right here is a little thing that's labeled wire maintenance. I think it's a clip that you have to install on this, but right now it's just a plastic tab. It doesn't really look functional. Down here at the bottom, as you see the feet, this is the back of where I installed it. And there's some wire maintenance here. So basically you would take your wire here and run it at the back of the base so everything looks clean. On this side of the TV, you have that outlet. That's where you're gonna plug it into. So far as inputs, you have two USBs and one of them is 3.0 for faster transfer. We have an ethernet input, plus this TV does have Wi-Fi, of course. We have four HDMI inputs. And the way this works is input one can support up to 4K at 144 Hertz. And that's ideal for a PC gamer and that's using verbal refresh rate. We have input two that can support up to 120 Hertz. We have input three and four that can support 60 Hertz, but input four also has eARC, so you can use that for your soundbar. TV tuner and with adapter you can hook up your uh, standard composite video input. Down here we have a headphone jack, which is still rare. And we have a fiber optic output down here as well. So you have plenty of connections for your different equipment that you have at your house. 
So I went ahead and got everything all set up. It is powered by Google TV. So I entered my Gmail account, Wi-Fi, went through some terms and conditions, and this is the landing screen that you get. But the last thing you need to do is go ahead and pull off the screen saver. And as you can see here, there's a orange tab on this TV. We can grab it right there and then just go ahead and pull it off. That's always a satisfying sound. All right, so the first thing we'll look at is the operating system and just see how snappy it is. And so far, I'm not seeing any kind of glitches or delays in it. As you see here, the operating system is moving fairly fast. Now, this TV does have, again, the Google operating system. So, of course, you have access to the thousands of applications on there. Now, we're not going to go too deep in the menu, but we'll find some highlights in here that might be important to you. Now, under channels and inputs, you can go in here, you can set up CEC, and this is basically going to allow the TV remote control to operate cable boxes, PlayStations, and things like that if you want to use one remote control. You also can relabel all your different settings. And I will tell you that this TV does have a automatic setting where it does try to define what device it is and set this up automatically, but it doesn't happen on everything. Now we do have our picture modes such as smart HDR, sports, movies, games, vivid mode. You can control your brightness, saturation. And down here at the bottom, you can apply this color profile to all the inputs on the television if you find one that you like. There is a screen zoom inside of here. As you can see here, you can change it from four by three uh, all the way up to 16 by nine zoomed in. So that's gonna be great for watching certain content and filling in the screen to get the best resolution. Now going over here to audio, we do have dynamic sound, uh, standard music, voice, and we do have a virtual surround sound to reproduce a surround sound setting. Now looking through these audio setups, one thing that I did find that was pretty cool is down here at the bottom, you can hook up a external subwoofer to the television. And this allows you to play the subwoofer and the TV speakers at the same time. So that's gonna be a great feature. Plus you can have headphones and internal speakers working together. So this does have some cool audio features as far as people who have headphones and they wanna have the TV speakers playing at the same time. You do have an intelligent picture setting where the TV will adjust itself automatically based off the light in the room. And you also have that for sound as well. Now, as far as the operating system, this one is powered by Android 12, which is the newest and greatest. So they did update this from last year. And as far as storage, we're looking at 52 gigabytes of internal storage. And this is great, so you can install all your applications, no problem. There's an ambient mode, and this is gonna allow you to play different artwork. You can also hook it up to your Google Photo to display your family pictures, but it always has a screensaver whenever you're not using it. This is a feature I really like, it's called Power on Behavior. So if you plug in a cable box or something like that, you can have this TV to go to the last input used, which is, I find very handy, instead of going back to the Google screen all the time. You also have a sleep timer, but one feature this TV doesn't have, it doesn't turn itself on far as a timer for that. Now you do have casting features, so you can cast your Android devices to it. It does support Apple AirPlay and HomeKit. And we have Game Master, where if you have certain inputs, you can have this to automatically detect a gaming console and put it in the right settings automatic. So you can see here from the factory, it's all set up at automatic. So it's not really much you have to uh, do with that. It does come with a Bluetooth remote, so you don't have to worry about pointing it directly to the TV. And if you need to, you can pair your own Bluetooth uh, headphones, keyboards, and things like that to the television uh, to have control over it. So now we're gonna check out some gaming features on this TV. As you can see, it is in game mode here at the bottom at factory settings. And just keep in mind, this is a 120 hertz, 60 hertz tester. In most cases on 4K 120 hertz TV, you're gonna take this input lag and cut it in half. But we're looking at 13.1 at 1080p, 60 frames per second. And that's pretty respectful alone. So if you have a PC or Xbox Series X or something like that, you're gonna get a faster input lag if you're playing 120 hertz. So this is the PS5, and I just want to show you what this TV can actually support. At 4K, which is the 2160, we can get variable refresh rate at 120 hertz, HDR supported. So no matter what you run through this TV, through a PS5, everything is supported. And let's go over to 1440p. And the thing about using 1440p is that 
the maximum you're going to get out of it is 60 hertz so 4k is going to be a better option you also can have hdr and again 60 hertz is what it supports as far as those other features now if we drop down to 1080p resolution the verbal refresh rate goes back up to 120 hertz hdr supported and as you can see no matter what you run through it you're going to get the maximum signal so 1080p and 4k are going to be your best if you want the fastest gaming on this television now we're going to take a look at the game master feature in this television for the gaming bar all you need to do is press and hold down this menu button until you get this little pop-up on the screen the first thing you have here is a aiming button and if we turn it on we can uh, get this crosshair in the center uh, we have your picture modes and this is based off the different frames per second or what type of game that you're playing we do have a shadow detail level. So if you want better black levels, you can play around with this feature. And then we have the full gaming menu. The first thing we have here is HGIG. So this is set up by the developers on some games to give you the best watching experience. So you can uh, play around with that. You can also change the aiming aid settings. So you can make it bright, change it colors, make it big, small. And on some games, you can change the aspect ratio. For the most part, that's everything you get in the menu system. Plus here at the top, it'll show the console, the frames per second, HDR, auto low latency, and verbal refresh rate. So that's all we have on this video because I really want to focus on some few other things I have going on. But here's my first impression. So far, I played some movies on it. I played YouTube TV and some other things and it performs very well. One of the things that really stands out to me is that I don't see any backlight bleed and the color reproduction has plenty of it. So it's going to look really great on any signal that you put through the television. Now I still need to get into the motion and upscaling and we'll cover that when we get to the full review. But if you're a gamer, you're definitely going to love this TV. You can play your PC up to 144 hertz, assuming that you have like a 3090 or 4090 graphics card that can reproduce that in spurts. But for the 120 hertz performance, this TV is smooth. I also like the fact that you can use the 1440p. I know you only get 60 hertz, but at least it will support it. Other than that, I'm looking very forward to getting to the Adobe Vision settings and doing all the picture tests we do, but I do have three more unboxings that we're going to work on. And then once that's over, I'll go back and review all the TVs that I've been unboxing so I can take my time to make sure that these reviews are done correctly. Now, if you have comments that you want to see on the full review, leave that below and I'm going to use that information to make the video even better and ask your questions at the same time. With that being said, if you guys haven't already, make sure you go over to my website that I'm starting for people who are all into TVs. You can upload your pictures, share your stories, or even upload a clip of a video if you like. That's called 4ktvchat.com. Make sure you go check it out. With that being said, our goal for this year is to hit 200,000 subscribers by the end of 2024. If you haven't already, go ahead and subscribe to the channel. It doesn't cost you a thing and you help out the analytics. I'm Tech Steve. Thanks for watching and I'll catch you on the next one. Peace.